How is glue made? Did you know that the earliest known use of glue dates back to around 200,000 BC? Ancient people made a form of adhesive from birch bark tar, which they used to attach stone flakes to wooden spears. Today, glue has become an essential part of our daily lives and is used in various industries and applications. But have you ever thought about how it's made? In this video, we will cover the process of making glue. We will also share a complete guide to making glue at home. So let's dive first in its historical background. It's no surprise that glue has been an adhesive used for generations. Originally, early humans depended on natural resources, utilizing tree sap for their bonding needs. As technology advanced and the demand for more reliable adhesives grew, the production methods for glue evolved. Today, manufacturers develop glue with specialized synthetic ingredients, engineered to meet the specific needs of various applications. Raw materials for production process. What is needed to manufacture glue? Glue production involves several procedures and numerous raw materials. The journey from raw material to finished adhesive is fascinating but also complex. One of the most exciting aspects is the variety of sources used to create glue. For example, natural or synthetic raw materials, or a combination of the two, can be utilized to manufacture glue. Just think about a process where manufacturers use the binding properties of nature itself. Traditional natural sources for glue include animal byproducts like bones, cartilage, and skins. These materials go through a careful cooking process, which we will explain later, to extract collagen. Collagen is the main ingredient in animal-based glue and gives the glue its strong adhesive qualities. But that's not all. The plant kingdom also offers its bounty in the form of plant extracts. Soybeans, corn flour, and potato starch can be transformed into vegetable-based glues. These raw materials are processed to create sustainable, effective adhesives that serve various purposes. Next up, we have ingredients like solvents, preservatives, and thickeners, which play very important roles in glue production. Preservatives are vital for extending the shelf life of glue. Without preservatives, glue would lose its adhesive properties much faster, leading to waste and inefficiency. Solvents essentially break down the basic materials of the glue, making them easier to process and combine. They help achieve a uniform texture and consistency, ensuring that the glue can be applied smoothly and evenly. Then we have thickeners. These are additives that modify the viscosity of the glue. Thickeners can change the glue's thickness, making it easier to apply to different surfaces. Whether you need a glue that flows smoothly or stays in place without dripping, thickeners help achieve the desired consistency. Actual production process. Now let's take a look at the actual production process of glue. Once all the necessary ingredients are gathered and prepared, they undergo a series of steps to create the final product. The most common, or we may say the most popular method for manufacturing glue involves using collagen. But where does this collagen come from? Factories collect animal parts from various sources, including slaughterhouses, tanneries, and meatpacking companies. These animal remains can include scraps of hide or skin, tendons, bones, feet, ears, tails, fish heads, and pretty much anything. The process begins with a thorough cleaning. All parts are washed and any dirt is removed. This initial wash is crucial to ensure that impurities are not carried into the later stages of glue production. Following the cleaning, the animal parts are softened through soaking. This step involves submerging the materials in water, which helps to prepare them for further processing. Once softened, the hides and other materials undergo a series of water baths with increasing concentrations of lime. The lime causes the materials to swell and break down, facilitating the extraction of collagen. After sufficient treatment in the lime baths, the materials are rinsed in large washing machines. This is again an intensive process to remove the lime from the materials thoroughly. Weak acids are then used to ensure that any remaining lime is completely eliminated. Then the materials are cooked in water or steam for several hours to extract the collagen. We finally have the collagen and now it is time to convert it into glue. The process begins with cooking the collagen at high temperatures. Usually, the temperature is around 150 degrees F or 65.5 degrees C. During this cooking process, the collagen transforms into a usable adhesive substance. When the glue is first extracted, 
it isn't ready for commercial or industrial use. Here, manufacturers need to enhance it by adding various additives designed for specific applications. These additives include solvents, preservatives, and thickeners, which we have already discussed in this video. Here, you have to note that the exact color of the glue is determined by adding specific additives to the mixture. Common glue colors include brown, clear, and white. White glue is usually made using zinc oxide, while other colors are achieved with additives like phosphoric acid, alum, and sulfurous acid. Now, to effectively integrate these additives, the glue is placed into large vats. These vats are equipped with powerful overhead mixers that ensure thorough blending. The mixing process is really important as it achieves uniform distribution of all ingredients throughout the glue, resulting in a consistent and reliable product. The heavy-duty industrial glue mixers are specifically designed to handle the viscous nature of glue and the various complexities of blending multiple additives. Imagine how challenging it would be to mix all these ingredients at home. Even after this blending process, the glue is still in a liquid form and needs to be hardened. The water in the glue mixture is removed through various methods, such as drying, chilling, or dropping the glue into a liquid that doesn't contain water. This liquid gradually extracts the water from the glue, resulting in a thicker, usable adhesive. But guess what? It's still not over. Once the glue has been formed into its final state, it undergoes testing to ensure quality and consistency. This involves testing the adhesive strength, drying time, and other important factors to make sure that the glue meets industry standards. After passing this quality control phase, the glue is bottled, labeled, and prepared for distribution. This is the final step in the manufacturing process where the glue is ready to be used for various purposes and applications. Bone glues production. Now, what about the production of bone glues? You might be surprised to know that the manufacturing process is slightly different from the one we just discussed. The journey of transforming bones into adhesives begins with degreasing them in specialized solvents. This step removes fats and oils, ensuring the bones are prepared for the next stage. Following the degreasing process, the bones are mixed with hydrochloric acid that removes a large amount of minerals and calcium phosphate. What remains after this treatment is pure collagen, the essential substance needed for glue production. Once the acid is removed from the collagen, a glue liquid is left. At this point, colorants can be added to achieve the desired hue, similar to the process used in other glue types. The glue mixture is then subjected to a drying process Glues derived from animal parts, including bone glues, don't have an extensive shelf life. Unlike synthetic adhesives, these glues can have a shelf life as short as one year. This means that they must be used quickly before they lose their effectiveness. However, some manufacturers have found ways to extend the shelf life of bone glues by adding preservatives and stabilizers. This is how the glue is manufactured from animal parts, making use of all the different components available. Steps to make glue at home. Now, as promised, here's a simple guide on how you can make your own glue at home. To start things off, you have to first decide the type of adhesive you want to create. There are several typical alternatives, each suitable for different applications. For example, a flour-based glue made from a simple mixture of flour and water is perfect for paper crafts and other light-duty tasks. If you're looking for something better, a starch-based adhesive, which uses corn flour or potato starch mixed with water, is great for heavy-duty applications due to its transparent drying nature. Then we have a milk-based glue. This one is made from milk and vinegar and is an excellent choice for projects needing water-resistant properties like woodworking. It's up to you to choose the type of glue you need depending on the purpose and materials you're working with. Once you've decided, the next step is to gather all the necessary ingredients and tools. Most homemade glue recipes require common household items such as flour, water, corn flour, vinegar, a mixing basin, and a spoon. Check them twice because having everything at hand will streamline the process and ensure you don't miss any necessary components. The third step involves preparing your glue using the correct procedure. Follow the directions for your chosen recipe carefully. Typically, this involves combining your ingredients in a saucepan or a mixing bowl and cooking the mixture on the stove until it thickens. The cooking process is crucial as it allows the ingredients to blend and form a cohesive adhesive substance. 
Once your glue reaches the desired thickness, allow it to cool completely before transferring it to a storage container. Cooling is an important step to ensure the glue sets properly and achieves the correct consistency. If it's too hot, it may not stick well, and if it's too cold, it may become too thick to use. After everything is done, you have to test it before using it. While testing, you don't have to set the same criteria as industrial glue manufacturers. However, checking for adhesion and drying time is important to ensure your homemade glue works effectively. Homemade glues may not possess the same strength or durability as commercial options, so testing on a small area can save you from potential mishaps. After all, nobody wants their project to fall apart because of a weak adhesive. After you complete these steps, you can proudly use your homemade glue for all your DIY projects. How simple was that? Conclusion. So, this is pretty much it about glue and its manufacturing process. You can clearly see that the process of creating glue is complex, yet fascinating. And the best part? We use it daily without even realizing the effort and science that goes into making this indispensable household item. Although we live in a world where synthetic adhesives dominate, we can still appreciate the traditional methods of glue production and its humble beginnings from animal products. Let us know in the comments below if you have any more interesting facts or tips about glue that we missed. Make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon so you stay updated with our future videos. Goodbye.